Okay, students. So, in the first chapter, we discuss what changes are and under that, the two main types of changes, physical changes and chemical changes. Chemical changes are also called as chemical reactions. So, what are physical changes? The changes in which there is a rearrangement of particles in the matter. So, from solid, liquid and gases, there can be state change. At the same time, if you have a certain substance that is converted to new type of substances, then that is a chemical change. So, there are initially you have certain substances and finally we get new substances. So, the chemical changes are also known as chemical reactions. And I told you all in this lesson, we will be focusing more on the chemical reactions or chemical changes. So, then. Physical and chemical changes. If we arrange them into or if we uh, discuss the differences and examples between physical and chemical changes, you all are given a table in your textbook. So, in that you can see physical changes and relevant observations. That is the first column and the chemical changes and relevant observations are the second column. So, in the first one. The arrangement of particles which form the substance changes. No new substances are produced. So, when we say that, now when we consider the different states, now you all know if we take the solid state, you have the particles all closely packed. They do not move very much. So, there is very high attraction between the constituent particles because of that only all know students solids have a fixed volume and a definite shape. So, that is the solid. Then, if you take the liquids, they are the particles are somewhat far apart. So, there is space between the constituent particles. There is certain amount of movement shown by the constituent particles and because of that only, although they have a definite volume, they take up the shape of the container that they occupy, to the volume that they occupy. So, that is the liquid. Then if we take the gases, they are of course, the particles are randomly arranged, they always undergo random motion free random motion and there is lot of space between the constituent particles and very less attraction between the particles. So, there that is the gas state or gaseous state. So, when you go from solid to liquid, there is a rearrangement of particles. So, it can be solid to liquid, liquid to gas, again gas back to liquid and gas back to solid or it can be from gas to solid as well as solid to gas as well. Like we saw the naphthalene becoming vapor as you put it into the hot spoon, it becomes a liquid as well as vapor is evolved. It can be either from directly from solid to gas or solid liquid to gas. Again you saw the vapor condensing to form the solid. Vapor solidified. So again gaseous state to solid state. So, here there can be change between the three states and during that change only the rearrangement of particles occurs. So, arrangement of particles which form the substance changes. So, here they are closely packed, loosely packed, very randomly arranged. So, arrangement of particles which form the substance changes, but no new substances are if it is naphthalene, here we have naphthalene particles, naphthalene particles, naphthalene particles. Only the state is different. So, no new substances are produced. But in the chemical change, now if we look at the chemical changes, the existing substances are undergone. There is a mistake in these students. The existing substances undergo changes and new substances are formed. 
the existing substances undergo changes and new substances are formed. So, for that we saw examples. We had the magnesium strip. Then when you burn it, you get the white colored powder. Color powder. This is actually magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide. So this is one substance. This is another substance. So magnesium actually when to form magnesium oxide when you burn you all know for burning there is oxygen. So when magnesium burns it actually reacts with oxygen. So magnesium strip here plus we have oxygen. Magnesium is a shiny metal. Oxygen is a colorless gas. So two different chemical substances. Those are the initial substances. They undergo chemical changes and form a new substance that is magnesium oxide. So the existing substances, magnesium and oxygen, changes and new substances are formed. So magnesium oxide. You can remember even the reaction between magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid. So the existing substances are magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid and when they react, liberation of gas. So they are actually hydrogen gas is evolved. So they are, it is the hydrogen gas that is a new substance. At the same time, there is magnesium sulfate produced. So that is also a new substance. So in a chemical change, there are new substances formed. So the main difference between chemical and physical changes. Now we will look at some examples. First, examples for physical changes or the observations, relevant observations for physical changes. When you crush a clay stone, a lump of clay. There are what happens. Initially you have the solid clay, then it becomes powder. So when you crushing a lump of clay, that is one example. Crushing stone. So there solid becomes powder. Then, what else can you think of? The differences. Ice melting to form water. So here we can say ice melts to water. There what is the change? Solid to liquid. Another example students, we can consider the melting of wax. So melting of wax of melting of wax. So wax is in the solid state. When it melts what happens? The liquid wax is produced. So again solid to liquid. Then, we can consider the vaporization of water. When water boils, the liquid water is converted to steam, that is vaporization of water. Otherwise, if you spill water on the floor, normal temperature itself, the water dries off. How does that happen? The liquid water becomes water vapor. It goes into the gaseous state. So they are again liquid to gas. The same way we can consider the condensation of water vapor into water droplets. So condensation of of water 
vapor to form water droplets. So there, what is the change taking place? Again, gaseous state to liquid state. So those are some observations under physical changes. Like these students, you all can also think of many changes. Now when we said melting of wax, candle wax, when you burn a candle, you see the candle wax melting, the liquid candle forming, and then when the liquid candle flows down, again it solidifies. So again, solidifying of candle, liquid candle to form the candle wax. So that is also something you have observed. Then like I said, ice melts to water. Then water, when you put it into the ice cube trays and you keep it in the fridge, it freezes and becomes ice. So water becoming ice. Their liquid becomes a solid. So like that, we have looked at different types of physical changes. Similar to this, we will look at some observations under chemical changes under chemical changes. So an example that we see in our day-to-day -day life, burning of firewood, what happens there? You all know the firewood is the initial substance. When you burn it, the fire burns, there is heat evolved, you see the light, then the temperature increases, you use it for cooking and different purposes. What are the remaining substances or the new substances that are produced? Normally, ash is produced. So there are gases are evolved. So those are the new products or new substances that are formed during the burning of firewood. So that is one relevant observation. Burning of firewood. Burning of firewood. So there are what happens? Ash, come on. ash is produced and also liberation of gas. So when we say liberation of gases, as I told you all students, when firewood is burned, carbon dioxide can, is evolved. At the same time, water vapor will be evolved. So liberation of gases as well as ash is produced. That is one example or observation relevant to chemical changes. Then we have another one. You are familiar with limestone. Limestone is available as rocks. Normally limestone is calcium carbonate. And when you heat limestone, for certain industrial processes we heat limestone. When you heat limestone to a high temperature, Calcium oxide is formed. At the same time, carbon dioxide is liberated. So there, the initial substance is limestone, that is calcium carbonate. And the new substances produced are calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So that again is an observation relevant to chemical changes or chemical reactions. Heating limestone. That is, calcium oxide is produced. Produced. Carbon dioxide. Is evolved. Then, Similar to heating calcium carbonate or limestone, we can even heat condis. Condis is potassium permanganate. You all have seen condis crystals. What is the color of condis? They are purple colored crystals. So these purple color crystals, when you heat it, you can put a small amount of condis into a boiling tube and you heat it using the Bunsen flame. There is oxygen gas liberated. At the same time, we will get a 
black color solid remain. So that again is an observation that comes under chemical changes. So heating of condis or potassium permanganate. They are oxygen gases liberated. So that is another example. Similar to this, now burning of firewood, heating of limestone, heating of condis. Those are all examples of chemical changes. Can you all think of any other changes, students? Now we discussed in the first chapter also. We started off the lesson with that observation. Rusting of iron, something that we see in our day-to-day -day life. Rusting of iron, initially you have the objects made up of iron. And once it undergoes rusting, the rust is produced. That is the new product. So that is also an example. So here, rusting of iron. Their rust is produced. So those are the chemical and physical changes. So if we look at all the changes, you all know in a physical change, the particle arrangement changes when there is a state change taking place. And these are some examples. At the same time, when there is a chemical change taking place from the existing substances, new substances are formed. So these are all examples for chemical changes. So I'm sure students you can even think of many more changes that you have come across so far. Even as I told you all before ripening of fruits, burning of any fuel, any combustion like burning firewood, burning petrol, burning kerosene, burning diesel, using LP gas in the gas cooker, they are also LP gas is burned. So all these are combustion processes. So there are also there are chemical changes taking place. So like that even within our body when the digestion of food takes place those are also related to chemical changes. So in our day-to-day -day life we come across many physical and chemical changes. So in addition to what we have discussed here you all can think of many more examples. With that students I will move on to the next slide. Chemical changes. So from all the examples what we saw before, I'm sure you all have a very good understanding as to what chemical and physical changes are. And under chemical changes, we looked at many observations or evidences that can be used to identify chemical changes. Then again, when we looked at different examples, now you saw burning firewood. You have firewood, you have oxygen. Then from that, there are new substances formed. Then we had the burning of magnesium in the Bunsen flame. There I told you all students, magnesium is there, oxygen is there. When both of them react, there is magnesium oxide produced. The same way, when we heat limestone, again in the previous slide we discussed that. From limestone, that is calcium carbonate, we get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now consider the example where we have magnesium, oxygen. So two substances are there as the initial substances and one new substance is formed. So from existing one or more substances, new substances can be formed. The same way, consider calcium carbonate. You have one substance and that gets converted to two or more substances. So you have one substance that can be converted to one or more substances. So the chemical change can take place in that manner as well. At the same time, you can have two substances or two or more substances. For example, 
sodium hydroxide and dilute sulfuric acid. They can undergo changes and form two or more substances. So that is also possible. So based on these types of chemical changes or when a chemical change takes place, the following can occur. One of the following can happen during a chemical change. When you have two or more substances, they can combine and form new substances. One initial substance can be divided to form or converted to two or more substances. So those are the three types. We will write them down now. Forming new substances from two or more substances. The second one forming two or more new substances from one existing substance. Then we can have reorganizing reorganization of two or more substances to form two or more new substances. So if we look at examples for these types. Now when you have magnesium and oxygen and if we get magnesium oxide here we have two substances so from two or more substances you form a new substance that is one type of chemical change then we had calcium carbonate that is limestone And when you heat calcium carbonate, we saw that calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are produced. So they are from one existing substance we get two new substances, the second type of chemical reaction. Then we had the next one, sodium hydroxide plus dilute sulfuric acid. So from this, now I told you all students, I didn't tell you all the products or whatever the new substances are formed. Here when sodium hydroxide reacts with dilute sulfuric acid, there is the formation of sodium sulfate and water. So here you can see two Existing substances, sodium hydroxide and dilute sulfuric acid. Two new substances are formed, sodium sulfate and water. The same way we had magnesium and dilute 
sulfuric acid. Here students, I am just showing you all what happened with the initial substances and the new substances. I have not come to the part where we need to write chemical equations that we will discuss in a while a little later. So magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid, what were the products we saw? I said liberation of hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas and in addition to that magnesium sulfate is formed. So from all these, the first one you can see there you have two initial substances combine and form one new substance. So this is one type of chemical reaction. We will be calling this in after some time. We will discuss the different types of chemical reactions. We will be referring to this as chemical combination reactions. Then we have the second type. One existing substance becomes two or more new substances. They are, it divides into new substances. Or we can say decomposes because we are heating also decomposes into new substances. So that type of reaction is known as chemical decomposition. Then if you take the last two reactions, they are somewhat similar. Now you can see in the last two reactions, this one and this one, there are two initial substances and two new substances are being formed. Therefore, we can say these are displacement reactions and there are also there is a difference. In the first one, both are compounds. You are familiar with that. Sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, both are compounds. But here, magnesium is an element whereas sulfuric acid is a compound. So, these two are different but both are displacement reactions. So we will be discussing that after we discuss what chemical reactions are. So the substances that are existing and the new substances that are produced, we give specific names to those. The substances that we have now initially are known as reactants and the substances that are produced are known as products. So when reactants are converted to products, we say a chemical reaction is taking place or a chemical change is taking place and the chemical change can take place in three different ways. So under that there are four types of reactions. That is what we will be discussing a little later. So before that I will move on to the next slide. So the substances taking part in a chemical change are called the reactants. I told you all that students. So the initial substances. In all the previous examples, magnesium and oxygen, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid or magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid, all these are reactants of those chemical reactions. The substances taking part in a chemical change are called the reactants. So the new substances produced by a chemical change are known as the products. So whatever the substances are produced, they are the products. So during a chemical reaction, so during a chemical reaction, what happens? The reactants are converted to products. So as we discussed before, you can have one reactant becoming many products, one, two or more products or you can have two or more reactants becoming one product or else we can have two or more reactants being reorganized to form two or more products. So those are different ways of chemical reactions taking place. So as an example, 
if we consider what we have discussed before, the reactions that we saw, magnesium plus oxygen forming magnesium oxide. Now, when you write the reactants and products using words, we call it a word equation. Whereas, if you use the chemical symbols, the chemical formulae, then we call it a chemical equation. And there are also, when we balance the number of atoms of each element involved, then we call it a balanced chemical equation. So, what I have written here is the word equation. This is the word equation. Word equation of a chemical reaction. But the same thing we can write the balanced chemical equation. So, students in this lesson, we will be discussing how to balance chemical reactions or chemical equations. So, here of course, I am going to write it for you all. So, magnesium has the symbol Mg. Then we have oxygen. Oxygen is present in nature as O2 gas. You all know it is a diatomic gas present in the atmosphere. So, when they react, they form magnesium oxide, MgO. You are familiar with these students. You all know how to write chemical formulae for compounds. Using their valencies by exchanging the valency, you can write the chemical formula. So, this is the chemical formula of magnesium oxide. And as I told you all, when we write balanced chemical equations, which we will be discussing in this lesson, all the atoms of each element on the reactant side should be equal to the atoms on the product side. So, here of course, the balanced equation will be 2 magnesium oxide. Here you can see 2 magnesium and 2 magnesium oxide. So, 2 magnesium atoms are there, 2 magnesium atoms are on the other side, 2 oxygen atoms are here, 2 oxygen atoms are on the other side. I will go into detail about balancing equations when we come to that topic. So, for now, remember students, this is the word equation. This is the balanced chemical equation. So, in this, what are the reactants and products? Both magnesium and oxygen are reactants. Both these are reactants. Here we have the product. Same way, if we look at another reaction. Now you can remember calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, when you heat, we got calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. For this also, we can write the balanced chemical equation. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3. You are familiar with all these formulae. Heat, you will get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, can you all see students? You can understand the number of reactants and the number of product. So, calcium carbonate is the reactant. And here we have two products. So, from one reactant, we get two products. Then the example, another example, what we discussed before. As I told you all, magnesium with dilute sulfuric acid. 
magnesium with dilute sulfuric acid I will write the arrow here we get magnesium sulfate with plus hydrogen so again if we write it as a balanced equation magnesium sulfuric acid is h2so4 you will get magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas so that is the word equation this is the balanced chemical equation so here you can see students two reactants and two products so initial substances are rearranged to form new substances so you all can remember students the three ways in which chemical reactions take place formation of a substance from more two or more substances one substance initial substance being converted to two or more new substances or reorganizing of initial substances to form new substances so all these are examples for those three types of chemical changes or the way in which chemical reactions take place so i am sure with all these students you all can understand what chemical reactions are or how chemical reactions take place with that understanding we will move on to the next slide so in this slide students we have an activity activity study the variety of chemical changes so so far we have discussed the reactants becoming products is the chemical change and that is what we call as chemical reactions and during a chemical reaction the reaction can take place in three different ways based on that as i told you all there are four types of chemical reactions so here we will be doing this activity in order to understand those four types of chemical reactions so for that we need these materials the first one what is that magnesium strip so i will write it as magnesium i will write one below the other students then we have the bunsen burner bunsen burner then we need zinc granules or zinc metal it has to be zinc a piece of zinc a small uh, plate of zinc or zinc granule anything is fine then here you can identify this what is that condis or potassium permanganate crystal so potassium permanganate crystals potassium permanganate or what we can call as condis then we have a iron plate a piece of iron plate iron plate then here we have sodium sulfate there are two substances crystalline white color solid substances one is barium chloride the other one is sodium sulfate so then we need the others as well so here we need or we have barium chloride then these two are dry ethers dry 
equals that is to use as burning or glowing splints. If you hold it to the flame, they will catch fire. This is from the coconut leaves, the dry eagles, you all are familiar with that. If you hold it to the flame, it catches fire. Either we can use it as a burning splint or when the fire is blown off, you can have the glowing splint. Depending on the necessity, we can use it either way. So dry eagles are needed. Then on this side, we have a boiling tube. We might need more than one boiling tubes also. And we have the matchbox. And also we might need copper sulphate. Copper sulphate solution. Then we need test tubes. And pair of towels. In addition to that, we might need beakers as well to make the solutions, glass rod to mix the solution. So those are all available in the lab students. Now these are some of the materials that are needed mainly. So if we look at the materials, magnesium, potassium, permanganate or condis crystals, Barium chloride, then boiling tube, test tube, you need the Bunsen burner, iron plate, dry eagles, matchbox, pair of tongs, zinc granule, sodium sulfate. We will need copper sulfate solution as well as beakers. In addition to that, as I told you all, we will need other glasswares as well, what is available in the lab. So these are the materials. Again, here also students, we will be doing the four different steps in or four different reactions are observed during this activity. So I will move on to the next slide where we look at the method. So method, do the activities given below and record the observations. So the activities are hold the magnesium ribbon in the Bunsen flame with a pair of tongues. So there it is going to be magnesium ribbon being burnt. You are familiar with this reaction students. We did it before also. When magnesium burns in oxygen, what happens? It burns with a bright white flame and white color powder was produced that remained and we all know what that is. Initially we have magnesium and oxygen and finally we get magnesium oxide. So the reactants are magnesium and oxygen and the product is magnesium oxide. So that is a reaction that we have already done but we will be doing it again as well. Then we have heat crystals of potassium permanganate in a boiling tube. So you take a small amount of potassium permanganate that is although it's purple color when it is a large amount it looks as blackish color crystals but you can see the purplish color. So the purple color potassium permanganate crystals are taken into a boiling tube. So you heat it using the Bunsen flame. Then you will observe. So you can see when the reaction is taking place what we will do is we will insert a glowing split. So I told you all students you take the dry eagle you hold it to the flame it will start burning. And when the flame is put off, you get the glowing split. You insert that into the boiling tube where we have the potassium permanganate being heated. You will observe what happens there. Then we have the third one where we have to take copper sulfate solution. I told you all we will need copper sulfate solution as well into a test tube and add the clear zinc granule. So they are the reactants are going to be copper sulfate and zinc. Then we will observe that reaction. The fourth one, take a little barium chloride solution into a test tube and add a little sodium sulfate solution into it. So that is the fourth type of reaction that we are going to observe. 
In the first one students we have magnesium as you already know it will react with oxygen. Here of course we will be earlier one note the students here we are burning. This is burn. This is heat. There is a difference. So here we will be holding it. When we burn it, we will hold it to the fire. So there magnesium will react with oxygen. But when you heat potassium permanganate, there is no reaction with oxygen. We already discussed the products. One of the products I told you all when we were discussing observations related to chemical reactions. When you heat potassium permanganate, you get the liberation of oxygen gas. So here oxygen will be produced. That is why we use a glowing spleen to identify whether it's oxygen or not. In addition to that, you will get other products as well. So here also the reactant is potassium permanganate. So in the first one, we have two reactants. Second one, we have just one reactant. Then third one, copper sulfate and zinc. Again, two reactants, but one is a compound, the other one is an element. Copper sulfate is a compound, zinc is an element. In the fourth one, barium chloride and sodium sulfate, both are compounds. I am sure now you get an idea as to what we are trying to Earlier I told you all the reactants and products. The reaction can take place in three ways. Then I gave you all some examples. And I mentioned the four different types of chemical reactions. So we are trying to observe those four types of chemical reactions. So although there are four different steps, I am sure you all can understand the procedure clearly students. So let's go to the lab and do the activity now. Okay students, so now we are going to observe different types of chemical changes. You already know what chemical changes are. What are they? Formation of new substances from existing substances. So there, there is the rearrangement of constituent particles taking place or atoms rearrange from the existing state to the new state. So what are the existing substances called? They are known as the reactants. And the newly formed substances are the products. So in a chemical change, we have the reactants. They undergo chemical changes and form the products. Now this can take place in different ways. You are familiar with that. Now there are two or more reactants. They can combine and form a product. Or else a one particular substance, that is one particular reactant, can be converted to two or more products. Then there is the third instance where you can have two or more initial substances which can be converted to again two or more substances. So the chemical changes can take place in three different ways but based on that we have four different chemical changes. So that is what we are trying to understand here. So to understand the four ways in which the chemical changes take place, I have these substances. First, I will be using the magnesium strip. We have already done this reaction, burning the magnesium strip in flame, Bunsen flame. So there are magnesium strip will react with oxygen. So there we have two reactants. We will see what happens when the reaction takes place. Then I have potassium permanganate, only one reactant. When I heat it, I will take the potassium permanganate into a boiling tube and when I heat it, we will see what happens. Thereafter, I have two substances, copper sulfate and zinc. So again, two reactants, when they react, what they will produce. And finally, we have barium chloride and sodium sulfate. Again, two substances, two reactants, how they will react. So Based on all, for all of these observations, we will be able to classify the different types of chemical changes taking place. I'll start the reaction with magnesium strip. So already you all know students, we have done this activity before also. I showed you all previously 
normally the magnesium strip in the lab it has a layer of oxide over it so we need to clean it i have already cleaned a magnesium strip you can see the difference the clean magnesium strip you can see the shine the other one you cannot see the shine so i'm going to use this and burn it in the bunsen flame so we need a pair of tongues and then i will burn it in the bunsen flame so here i'll take the magnesium strip like before we will burn it in bunsen flame you all know the observation students it burns with a bright white flame and what do we get at the end a white color powder so here you all can see there So in this reaction, you all can see all this chemical change. This is the reactant, the magnesium strip. Okay, I'll show it to you all students. This is the magnesium strip and this is the product, the white color powder. So in this reaction, you can see students, magnesium is one reactant. The oxygen gas that is around us, when there is combustion, oxygen will be used up. So when we hold the magnesium strip to the Bunsen flame, it will burn. Then what happens there? The magnesium reacts with oxygen. So two reactants and there is only one product form. Can you all see this? The white color solid substance. So that is magnesium oxide. That is the product. So as I told you all before, two reactants combine and form one product. So we call this type of reaction as a chemical combination reaction. So in chemical combination reactions, there are two or more reactants which combine and form only one product. So that is the first type of reaction. Then I will move on to the second type of reaction where I use potassium permanganate. So before that I will remove all these. As I told you all before, the second part of the activity, we need to use potassium permanganate, what we normally call as condis. You all have seen this. You can see here, it is a dark purple color crystalline substance, but you see it as almost like black color crystals. You are familiar with this potassium permanganate or condis. Then what do we do? We need to take a boiling tube into that I need to take a small amount of potassium permanganate and then I will be holding it to the Bunsen flame. At the same time we need to have a glowing splinter there. So while I hold it to the Bunsen flame you will see there will be a change taking place and you can see some it will be mostly visible evolving of gases. Liberation of a gas at that time if you hold the glowing splinter you will see a change. So that is what you need to observe. So here I am taking only one reactor, potassium permanganate. So here I have taken potassium permanganate crystals. So here students, for a glowing splinter, I will use a joss stick. So incense stick, you all know. Then it would be easy for us to observe the change. You all know what a glowing splinter is. There should be no flame. Only the glowing part has to be there. The splinter has to be, it has to have the glowing burning part but without a flame. Right, so here I'll heat the potassium permanganate and at the same time we will insert the glowing splinter. You have to observe what happens to the glowing splinter. Now you all can see the glowing splinter re getting rekindled little by little. Now you all can see students, the glowing splinter has rekindled.
you all have to observe the glowing splinter what happens there now you all can see it is getting rekindled now you all can see it rekindles and again burns so you all know students when there needs to be combustion there has to be oxygen gas so we use the glowing splinter when i inserted the glowing splinter you all saw it rekindled and it started burning so that means there was oxygen gas evolved from the potassium permanganate so as i told you all before potassium permanganate initially it is only one substance one reactant when we heat it using the bunsen burner the potassium permanganate gets converted to different products it becomes potassium manganate manganese dioxide and also oxygen gas is liberated so if you look at the product students now this also looks like black color powder you all can see that as well earlier you saw the potassium permanganate condis that is purple color more crystalline in nature if you really look close you will see a difference in the product that we have obtained so here there are two substances as the products and oxygen gas also was evolved so from one reactor there were three products produced so one substance was converted to three different substances these type of reactions are known as or these type of chemical changes are known as chemical decomposition reactions so then we will move on to the third type of change so to observe that third type of change i have copper sulfate solution here you all have seen this or maybe used this before also it is a blue color solution normally you all know copper sulfate is a crystalline solid substance if you dissolve it in water we get the blue color copper sulfate solution then i have zinc here you can see the zinc again zinc is a metal you can see here students the shiny zinc metal so i'll be using a very small piece of zinc when we put it into copper sulfate you will have to observe what happens there so here of course we are taking two initial substances or two reactants copper sulfate and zinc so students as i told you all we need to react copper sulfate with zinc so to do that what i will do is i will take a small amount of copper sulfate into a test tube here we can use a test tube no need of a boiling tube so into that i will put a piece of zinc i'll put this piece of zinc observe clearly what happens you will have to observe the color of copper sulfate and also you will have to observe whether anything deposits at the bottom you all can see the change taking place students but it takes some time you all can see the color of zinc plate has changed initially you saw it was shiny like this now you can see it has turned blackish in color the shine is not there anymore so that means there is a chemical change taking place the change taking place at the bottom you all can see a small amount of solid substance depositing can you see that when i shake it you all can see it moving and also from here can you see at this part a reddish brown color substance solid substance you all can see that is copper so you can see the reaction is taking place zinc is reacting with copper sulfate you can see the color of copper sulfate has decreased a little bit and also copper depositing at the bottom so if we leave it for some more time the reaction will occur further uh, students here you can see now the color of copper sulfate it has decreased further you all can remember it was more intense earlier now it has become a little bit more lighter if we keep it for a longer time completely the color will disappear that also you can observe and also you can see there 
the reddish brown color substance or brown color substance. So that is copper. Initially we had zinc and copper sulfate. So now there is a certain amount of copper deposited at the bottom of the test tube and also the color of copper sulfate has decreased. That means copper sulfate has reacted with zinc and the new products are formed where copper deposits and zinc sulfate is produced. While I do the next uh, step in the same activity, we will leave it aside. So later also we can observe the final color change. So for this next reaction, I have two solutions here, two reactants. This is barium chloride. You all can see students, barium chloride, slightly whitish color liquid when you compare with the sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate, you can see it is a completely clear solution, whereas you can see the barium chloride somewhat different. So we are going to react these two substances. So for this step also, I'll be using a test tube. I will take a test tube into that. I will take a small amount of barium chloride and into that I will add sodium sulfate. When I do that, observe what happens. So here when I add sodium sulfate, you all can see students. The solution became milky in color and when it reacts, I'll add a little bit more. You will see it has become milky in color. And if we allow it to stand for some time, we will see a white color substance depositing at the bottom of the test tube. So here we used two reactants, barium chloride and sodium sulfate. Now there is a chemical change taking place. That is why you get the whitish color or milky color solution. And in that, there is the production of or formation of barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So as I told you before, there are different ways in which the reaction takes place. When we take more than one reactants, there can be more than one products produced. So here, barium chloride and sodium sulfate, they form barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So that is known as a double displacement reaction. So with that, I told you all we will leave the solution to a side. Again, I told you all, I will show you all this one. Now, can you all see students? The color has become more lighter and you can see the brown color substance at the bottom, deposited at the bottom. So, this reaction where we used copper, sulfate and zinc. Two reactants, it became zinc sulfate and copper was deposited. So, there are Copper was displaced by zinc. Therefore, we call that reaction as a single displacement reaction. And after that, what did we do? We did the reaction between barium chloride and sodium sulfate. And I told you all the products, barium sulfate, that is the white color powder. Right. So normally students, when we use a very large amount and if we leave it for some time, then you will be able to see the white color solid depositing at the bottom. But at, at least you were able to see the color change. This became milky in color because there was the production of barium sulfate. So barium chloride and sodium sulfate form barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So there that reaction where we had two reactants and two products and that particular change is known as double displacement reaction. So we observed four different chemical changes. In the first one, you all can remember students, we used magnesium with oxygen. When magnesium burns in oxygen, there is magnesium oxide produced. So that reaction is known as a chemical combination reaction. Two or more reactants forming one product. Then the second reaction, I don't have the products here. We use potassium permanganate, one reactant giving rise to two or more 
products. I told you all potassium manganate, manganese dioxide and oxygen gas was evolved. You were able to see that the potassium manganate that remained in the boiling tube, potassium manganate and manganese dioxide and we used the glowing splinter to observe the evolving of oxygen gas. So from that you all know from one reactant two or more products are formed and those type of reactions are known as chemical decomposition reactions. Then the third one that is what I have here we used copper sulfate and zinc. So there are again two reactants but there the zinc displaced copper. So there was only one displacement therefore we call it the single displacement reaction. And finally I did this reaction between barium chloride and sodium sulphate. Here of course the products are barium sulphate and sodium chloride. So this is a double displacement reaction. So those are the four different types of chemical changes taking place. The chemical combination reaction, chemical decomposition reaction, single displacement reaction and double displacement reaction. So I am sure now you all can understand the four different types of chemical changes taking place. Okay students, so I am sure you all were able to observe all the changes, observe all the reactions very clearly. So using those observations, we will fill up this table even in your textbook. So in the first column I have the reaction. These are the four reactions that we did in the lab. You all can see first one burning magnesium in air. Then heating crystals of potassium permanganate. Then test with the glowing splint. Then the third one reaction of copper sulfate solution with zinc granules. And the fourth one reaction of barium chloride solution and sodium sulfate solution. So those are the four reactions that we observed in the lab. Now if we are to fill up the table, here you can see first column we need to fill the nature of the reactants, then observation and nature of the products. So when we say nature of the reactants, burning magnesium in air, you were not able to see oxygen but you saw or you don't see the air, you saw the magnesium stream. So what is that? A shiny metal. Shiny metal. And here we need to make sure that it is a clean magnesium strip. Then only you can see the shine. If the magnesium oxide layer was there, what we do we need to do? We need to clean it with a sandpaper. That also you all can remember. So that is the nature of the reactants. Then the observation, what was the observation? Burns with a bright white flame. Burns with, burns with a bright white flame. And after that what do we get? A white powder remains. White powder remains. So nature of the products. What is the product there? We get the white color powder. So white color solid or white color, we can say white color solid is the nature of the product. White color solid. So initially you had the shiny metal that is also a solid. Then we get the white color solid, the reactant and the products. Then the next one. Heating crystals of potassium permanganate. What is the nature of the reactants? Purple color crystals. Purple color, color crystals. What are the observations? 
you saw the conversion of purple color crystals to black color solid and also when we tested with a glowing spleen. The glowing spleen rekindles and burns with a bright flame. So those are the observations. Purple solid, solid turns black. Glowing splint, splint rekindles and burns. So those are the observations. So what are the nature of the products? The black color solid and also gas, colorless gas. So here we can see black color solid colorless 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 oxygen gas those are the products so how did we confirm that it is oxygen using the glowing splint. So normally that is the test to identify oxygen. When the glowing splint rekindles and burns with the flame, that means the gas liberated is oxygen. So we got a black color substance, solid substance remaining as the product and oxygen gas as the product. Then the next one. The third reaction, reaction of copper sulfate solution and zinc granules. What are the properties or nature of reactants? Copper sulfate is a blue color solution. Blue color. Here I will use the chemical formula, blue color copper sulfate solution. And zinc granules, how do they look like? Shiny solid metal. Zinc is a shiny metal. So here it is a solid. The nature of reactants. Then what happens? What are the observations? You all were able to see the decrease in blue color of the copper sulfate solution. What else did you all see? You saw the zinc metal dissolving and also you were able to see the brown color deposit. So those were the observations when reaction of copper sulfate occurs with zinc. So here we have to say blue color of solution decreases then we see zinc dissolves brown color solid deposit so those are the observations okay students so what are the properties of the products we saw the brown color solid depositing. So here we can say brown color solid. If we add a large amount of zinc and if all the zinc dissolves in copper sulfate, finally there will be no blue color. So that means we will actually get a colorless solution but we were not able to see that we only saw the decrease in blue color. So because we saw only the brown color solid as the product and the blue color of copper sulfate decreased we did not get the colorless solution but if you do the reaction for a long of time with more amount of reactants 
you will get a colorless solution. So that will be one of the products there. Then the last one. Reaction of barium chloride solution and sodium sulfate solution. How are the reactants? They are both colorless solutions. Both are, both are colorless, colorless solutions. Then during the reaction, what do you see? The formation of a white color precipitate. Formation of, of a white color precipitate. Precipitate. So initially as we mix the solution itself, you were able to see it became like milky, cloudy in nature. And then when we let it to stand for some time, you were able to see the depositing of the white color precipitate. So nature of products, white color solid. White color, color solid. That is the precipitate. Pitate and also colorless, colorless solution. So those were the observations. Now from these observations students, we can come up to some conclusions. Now in the first activity burning magnesium in air we only have magnesium and also we had oxygen that is air so we had two reactants forming the white color solid that is magnesium oxide so that type of reaction is known as chemical combination reaction combination reaction combination reaction then in the second reaction what did we have we had heating of potassium permanganate crystals so we only had KMnO4 that is potassium permanganate only one reactant on heating it decomposes to produce oxygen gas then there is potassium manganate and also manganese dioxide so one reactant becoming two or more here actually three products those types of reactions where on heating the reactant decomposes into products. We call it as chemical decomposition reaction. So the second type is chemical decomposition reaction. Decomposition reaction. Then the third type. What is that? We had blue color copper sulfate solution and zinc. So as I told you, copper sulfate and zinc. One is a compound, the other one is a liniment. So two reactants forming two new products. What are the products? Brown color solid is actually copper, the copper deposits. And we get zinc sulfate, copper and zinc sulfate. They are also, you get the reduction in color. I told you all, if we continue the reaction, completely zinc dissolves, you will get a colorless solution. That will be zinc sulfate. So we get the products copper and zinc sulfate. So from two reactants, you get two new products. But they are. You can see here, student, zinc is an element that displaces copper from the solution. 
that is why you get copper here so because of that we call this as a single displacement reaction these types of reactions are single displacement reaction single displacement reaction then we have the last type the last one what are the reactants we had sodium sulfate and barium chloride this is sodium sulfate Na2SO4 you all are familiar with chemical formulae and barium chloride but as products we get barium sulfate and sodium chloride so barium sulfate is the white color solid white color precipitate and sodium chloride solution is the colorless solution so here initially you have two compounds both are colorless solutions those are the reactants so two reactants forming two new products but here of course you can see sodium combines with chlorine barium combines with sulfur so both components of one compound are displaced so we call this type of reaction as a double displacement reaction so here this is a double displacement reaction so can you all understand this now you can have more two or more reactants forming one product that is chemical combination reaction one reactant decomposing or being converted to two or more products that is chemical decomposition reaction then when you have two reactants two or more reactants forming two or more new products under that there are two types when one is a compound and the other reactant is a element then there will be single displacement reaction and the last type when two or more substances are compounds and they produce two or more new substances it is going to be a double displacement reaction so can you all understand the four types of chemical reaction students that is what we will be discussing in detail so with that i will move on to the next slide according to the nature of the chemical change they can be classified into four types so i have already introduced those four types the first one chemical combination reaction second one chemical decomposition reaction then third one single displacement reaction fourth one double displacement reaction so four different types of reactions chemical combination reaction chemical decomposition reaction single displacement reaction and double displacement reaction those are the four different types of chemical reactions that you all need to understand students and after this with this slide i am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter i will discuss each of these types of reactions individually and we will be looking at examples 
In addition to that, we will be writing the word equation as well as the balanced chemical equation. And thereafter, I will explain to you all how you can balance chemical equation.